Time to watch me shave off my feet skin. There it is. But first, actually, I needed to do a little bit before that. I have this terrible crack that's splitting all the way across the ball of my foot, and I didn't want these flaps of skin to catch on the grater, so I decided to do a mini crack maintenance and clip this skin down before moving on to other steps. Um, these cracks, you can see, are quite red at the deepest point. They haven't bled yet, but they're really low. Like, this skin is feeling quite raw, and so I wasn't really able to flex my foot Foot, and I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on it with the grater or the shaver, but I knew that if I took this skin off around the cracks, then my foot wouldn't hurt as much at the cracking parts while I was using the tools. So this was the very first step just to get all that extra skin off. And then because when I did my other foot, I ended up having to use the callus softener anyway, I came in and used it first this time. So I let that soak in for like more than five minutes and then finally came in with the grater to start seeing what I could take off. I did come into this foot shave with little um, less high expectations, a little bit lower expectations than I had gone into the previous foot because I had had so many struggles, which I shared with you in those videos. This time, my aim was just to get as much as I could off of the edges and off the surface if possible. As you can see there, I was already struggling to get it off the surface in the middle. And so I knew I was just really trying to come in, get the edges, get as much off as I could, and then come in with the shaver, which is fine because I love using the shaver and it does such a great job. I'm kind of not using <clears throat> one or the other exclusively anymore. I just need to, you know, let these tools work in partnership with each other to make the job as easy as possible for me. This was kind of grueling. Um, I know we discussed uh, like whether this grater was dull or not during the last foot shave, but like it really was rather new. And as you can see on the edges, it's doing a great job of taking all the skin off and making it very smooth. So I'm proud of it for that, but it does have its limitations. After I had done the whole perimeter of my foot, I labored a lot trying to get all the skin off in the middle and I already knew it was gonna be a challenge. So at least I wasn't as frustrated and disappointed as I was on the previous foot. But nonetheless, it was so annoying that I couldn't just get that skin off. And I finally reached a stopping point and decided I was gonna do my big toe and then move on to using the shaver, which is exactly what I did. And then here we go with the shaving. I had to be pretty careful here because I had already graded off a layer of skin and I had used the callus softener from Footlogix, which helps urea penetrate deeply into the skin, making it very soft, very supple. And so it's so easy to just slice way too deep if I'm not careful. So I was going slowly here, really being delicate with myself and making sure I didn't go too low and cut myself. And especially around those cracks, they were so tender feeling that I didn't wanna to put too much pressure on my foot around the cracks. So I sort of worked above them and then worked below them and just made sure I was able to get all of that skin off at least as much as possible. I could have edited this down into two videos, which I thought about doing because that's what I did the last time, but I feel like really the meat of this content right here is the shaving, and I didn't want to not include it in this video, so the video is now slightly a bit longer, but I wanted to have it all together, and I've sped this up a little bit because I was working so slowly and tediously, and it just sort of dragged on and on. So I sped it up here, but essentially I just very delicately came around and took down all the thickness all around these cracks. Someone asked recently if I could put a collection of videos together to show you the progress of how the cracks have moved across my feet over the last like six months. And I think that's a great idea. So as soon as I have time to sit down and put that together, I will, because like I've told you, they migrate and um, they definitely have changed shape and location since I started making TikToks. And I'd love to share with you how that, how that has gone. But um, I don't even have those videos on my phone anymore. So I like have to go find them and get them back on my phone to be able to edit them all together and you know the drill. Sometimes technology stands in our way. <laughs> um, I was really nervous about using the shaver down on my heel here because my foot was uh, already kind of thin from grating over it a few times, but I managed to not go too thin and then I was able to take the grater here and kind of smooth everything out, get all the bits that still felt kind of thick 
And in the end, it looks pretty good. I know the cracks look kind of horrible and there's just nothing I can do about that, but at least I can flex my foot up and down. And actually, if these keep cracking, I am going to super glue them and try that out. Time to watch me shave off my feet skin. No, it's no. not. There it is oh, indeed. Yummy! There it is. There is my sign to get off this app for a while. That's it. I can't take it no more. I'm going to bed. I know this is like the cheapest, worst kind of super glue, but it's what I had and you gotta start somewhere. So before I invest in some like medical grade super glues or skin glues, I thought I'd just go ahead and try it with this. Now I have used super glue on my cracks before, like in high school when there was a really bad one. We usually had some crazy glue around and so I have done that in the past, but in my experience, it dries really thick and hard and I just, uh, I didn't wanna be uncomfortable or like more uncomfortable because of like thick super glue in a crack. However, lots of people who have this condition have messaged me over the months saying, you really need to give super glue a shot for your cracks. So despite the fact that this will probably anger and upset some people because I have also received lots of comments since mentioning this, that this is really unsafe. And like if these cracks are actually bleeding, you don't wanna get the chemicals from the glue in your bloodstream, totally agree. But these are not bleeding. And at, at this point, I was really desperate to try something because they just keep cracking. And and I can't thin the skin out more because it's already really thin and the cracks are hurting. They're in a spot on my foot that always bends and rolls when I'm walking. So it worked pretty good. Here's a few days later, excuse my dirty foot. I wanted to pick off the flaking super glue that was starting to come off before taking a shower. So these are sandal feet that are kind of grubby looking, but here I was just pulling off like the bits that had broken off because it only lasted like maybe two days before it started cracking. Nonetheless, in those two days, a lot of healing happened. So I'm actually really pleased and satisfied with how this turned out. Um, the cracks were able to heal up quite a bit and I just wanted to take this off and clip up the cracks a little bit so that they could continue to do their healing. Also, I have to say it's rather satisfying to pick it off once it's uh, dried and started to flake. The part in the middle is the most sore. That seems, oh, excuse me, the part to be cracking the most, but the one, the part on the left and the part on the right had really started to feel great, like not hurting at all. So, um, yeah, just con constant maintenance. I do get comments sometimes, people like, girl, take care of your feet. If you just moisturized and cleaned them, you wouldn't have this problem. Like, okay, I'll just, uh, I'll just never do anything, right? And just let it take its course and suffer constantly if that's what the fates have in store for me, please. So anyway, every single day I've been either adding glue or clipping a little bit and just trying to keep it low and comfortable. And this was right before I did toe maintenance. Now here you can see my toes look great, so you know that video is coming. But here are the cracks this morning, feeling so much better. Um, a few days of super glue really helped mitigate the additional stretching and cracking that was going on so that it had some chance to heal. And I think I'm gonna come back in and use more super glue to keep them closed while they continue to heal. And actually this went even better on my other foot. So I will show you those results soon. And I am gonna now finally invest in some medical grade super glue. <laughs> Time for everyone's favorite, toe maintenance. My toes were actually really peely this week. I think it's because I was wearing gym shoes and socks while out weeding a couple days in a row, and it just made my skin like very mushy, and that can kind of force the cracks to peel up a little bit. Anyway, time to come in and clip it all down and make them look good. By the way, comments like this just confuse the heck out of me. Like, my God, take care of yourself when I'm literally posting videos of me taking care of myself. <laughs> I know that most people just don't understand that this is a genetic mutation. This is how my skin grows. There's nothing I can do about it. And the opposite of taking care of myself would be to just let it go like forever and become one of those people on the show My Feet Are Killing Me or similar shows shows where like they don't have any idea how to take care of themselves and they need doctors to remove it doctors to prescribe medications and creams and like give them a whole regimen and teach them and like no shame to those people if you don't know what to do you've got to get professional help right the difference is that I've gotten professional help since I was two years old 
Like when I was born, my parents were like, what the hell is this? Because obviously this is not normal. And it just kept growing and growing. At first they thought maybe I just had like some calluses that, you know, I was born with them from something that happened in the womb and maybe they disappear, but they just kept getting thicker and thicker and they didn't go away and nothing that they did to like rub it away, like with a pumice stone or sandpaper was helping. So they of course went to our pediatrician, like when I was still a baby and we got referred to specialist after specialist, you know, we saw dermatologists and eventually landed with a dermatology professor, I believe, or like associate professor at the University of Washington, which we happened to live in Seattle at the time. And they had a really great program there. And we just lucked out and ended up with a specialist who said, I have never actually seen this in real life, but I know of a study that was done. And this looks like um, palmo plantar keratosis. And that was my diagnosis, palmo plantar keratosis. Now, back in the 1980s, the best he could tell me was like, there's a lot of experimental research. None of it's been very successful. My recommendation would be to just take it off in whatever way is comfortable as often as possible and keep it moisturized. So that is literally what we did. That that was my medical advice back in 1987, 1988. And we've just followed that. When I was really little, my parents helped me to scrub it off after baths or scrape it off with like a knife gently, just take it down as much as possible. We also tried like razor, straight razors like for your face and open blades like razors to try and cut it off. But my dad, he was the one mostly trying to help me take care of this skin because my mom had a huge career and she was very full time. And so she was an amazing mother, but she was not around like my dad was. And so we tried, I mean, we experimented and experimented, experimented. One summer, my feet were super, super dry after spending like weeks at the beach um, in the salty water, which had just been drying them out and I was getting cracks. And he took like an orbital sander to my feet, which actually produced pretty great results, but it tickled so much that I just could, I was like, I don't want to do this again. And he was like, neither do I, because you're laughing so hard. I can't even do it. Um, but like we tried. And so then at some point my mom and dad have arguments or had arguments about who actually discovered the shaver. So I don't actually know which one found it. I believe it was my mom on a business trip or it was my dad on a business trip. One or the other in an airport, somebody found the cradle blade and therein began my journey of self-care. Like I had been, I had a paring knife that I kind of used regularly to literally like saw the skin off my feet. But you have to imagine it was as thick as like uh, those really, really thick calluses that you see on TV shows. And so when I would come in and do that, like every six months, I could actually saw the feet off kind of like that King Callus video that I duetted a while ago, where he was like cutting off these huge thick layers. That was where I started by myself. And then eventually I got the callus shaver and I experimented with that for a couple of years before I really got a good technique. I did worked on my feet a lot more than my hands back then. And I literally just chewed and peeled my hands like all the time. It was terrible. I was a very weirdo kid and nobody wanted to be friends with me because I had this weird skin and I was always chewing on it. So let's just be real. I had a glow up for serious in my twenties because in my teens and tweens and early childhood, I just had this bizarre skin and I didn't know how to take care of it. But now I have a whole arsenal of tools. I have been continuing to learn. I told you guys when I came onto TikTok that I felt like I had been kind of stagnant. I hadn't tried any new creams or any new tools in like 10 years. I just had my routines, took care of my skin, and that was it. And so now you guys are watching me for the last few months, like try some new things and learn some new things and really develop even further in my techniques. But let me just tell you, this is me taking care of myself. Not a day goes by that I don't do something to take care of my skin and my nails on my hands and feet. And this is just how it is. So I think I'm doing a great job. Thanks for hanging out with me with Toe Maintenance. I'll see you soon. This skin is so incredibly unusual. What even is my life, you guys? I had this out of body experience editing this video where suddenly I just like zoomed way out in my perspective and I was like, oh my God, this looks so weird. This looks so gross. Like, why am I filming it and cutting it for TikTok? Like, what even is my life, right? And yet, the vast majority of the time, I don't have that perspective because this is just normal to me. 
it's this is the reality that I know and so it's easy to not see the forest through the trees like I'm just seeing my foot this is my skin I want to take it down might as well share maybe I'll help some people maybe I'll entertain some people and then sometimes like I have that moment of of realization that this is this is absolutely unusual and strange and also like I understand all the comments about how gross this is I really do like I I complain about haters a lot but that's more people who are telling me that like I do not take care of myself that my hygiene must be absolutely abysmal that I'm misleading people like some of the accusations really bother me but like if you go to my recent viral video of rasping my foot that has like 8 million views from last week um you will see that like the vast majority 90 percent of the comments maybe are like barfing emojis and ew what the fuck or bro i was eating etc 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 right i mean most people find this horrendous appalling unacceptable disgusting it's okay like when i take that 10,000 foot view i can see that this is totally weird and maybe a little gross maybe a lot gross to some people but like this is my reality and i i wish i could just let everyone who wanted to take a day in my shoes or maybe we should say a day in my skin to understand why i make the choices that i do like i don't rasp my foot daily in the shower because if this type of skin is made too thin it's really hypersensitive tender uncomfortable, very prone to cracking. So like, why don't I do the big toe and the ball of my foot like every day and just never let it get thick? Well, in my experience, then I can't walk. And I do not want to have super achy, tender feet where I'm dancing around all day, wishing I could sit down where I'm avoiding doing all the tasks I need to do in my daily life because walking hurts. Like, why would I do that to myself? So despite it not looking great for you, and I mean to the people who think that this is appalling that I would let it, quote unquote, get this way, um, I'm going to do what's comfortable. Like ultimately, as long as I'm not like letting it go so far that it's debilitating on the other side, like it's really thick, really tight, and now cracking because it's so dry and thick, the middle ground is where I want to be. And that's why I make that decision. And why do I clip just the baby toes and not the big toe? It's because they're the ones that get super peely. They're the ones that start to like crack underneath the toes in that little spot of skin beneath the toe and the foot. And like keeping that low and flexible and soft is the way to go so that they never crack under there. And I can roll my feet in my steps. Like, <laughs> anyway. I understand where you guys are coming from, all the folks who disagree with this, all the people who think this is disgusting. But, you know, it's a free country. <laughs> I think I said that before and people just cracked up at that. But it really is. Like, if you want to post pictures of your feet online, despite the fact that everybody says never, ever do that because you're giving away something for free, I... I know that probably some people sexualize my feet. Like, I'm aware that this is a thing and, like, maybe it's not the brightest idea, but from my perspective, like just looking at it logically, it seems like these feet are not the type to be feet findery feet, right? <laughs> these are an unusually strange, maybe gross type of feet that I can like comfortably freely share on the internet as a form of education and entertainment for people who like clipping, picking and peeling without it being just like a foolish, uh, I'm giving my feet out to all the fetish people, right? And sure, if there are some of them out there, there's really nothing I can do about that. But anyway, here's some rambling thoughts off the top of my head about how I understand that that this is weird. I, I just, it, it also is unavoidably my daily life. So might as well share might as well do something with it rather than just being in there alone watching true crime documentaries while I clip my feet. Like, might as well film it and show people. And it's okay if people want to hate. Like, most of the quote-unquote hate is not actually hate. It's just alarm and shock and so be it. I will block some people. I do use that block button liberally. Um, but the typical things that block people are not actually them being mean. It's people who, like, I can tell genuinely do not want to see this content and have made it clear that this is extremely bothered some to them. So, like, if you comment, trigger warning, please, or 
I never, ever, ever want to see this again, or why would TikTok do this to me? Those sorts of comments, I absolutely block those people right off the bat because I know that if they see it again, they're probably going to flag me. But otherwise, it's free game and anybody can watch. Bye. Are these the driest feet you guys have ever seen? Maybe not, but we're going to lotion them today. And also I'm gonna talk about pumice stones. You see this texture of my foot right here? This is after using a pumice stone today in the shower. So I let my feet get wet the whole shower long and at the very end of the shower, I used a pumice stone just to smooth out all the edges because they were getting really quite dry and flaky. Now, this is what they look like after a pumice stone, which is why I tell you guys it's not the solution. It can help to like smooth out the skin a little bit and remove like all of the driest, flakiest outer layer, but like it's still going to be incredibly dry. And so then maybe 20 minutes after a shower when the skin is fully dried out, sometimes a half an hour, I will come in and lotion. This lotion, I hesitate to even share with you guys because Amazon doesn't always have it in stock and so I don't want it to like disappear, but this is the St. Ives Hydrating Lotion. I love it because it has vitamin E, which is really good for the skin, and also it just doesn't leave that sticky, tacky finish that so many of these um, super hydrating creams leave behind. And so this is usually my go-to. The only problem with it is that it really soaks in and then needs another application, or I need to use another lotion afterward. So I love it because it soaks in. It gives me instant relief from the dryness. I mean, it really like penetrates almost like the urea foam that I love as well. But um, I will have to follow up with more of this lotion or with something else. Now here's my other foot and I wanna show you another lotion that I really like. I have a little crack going on on this one as well, but thankfully none of these cracks hurt. Um, they're just kind of there and I'm not trimming them short because I'm just trying to leave them alone as they heal because they've been doing that well on their own. But this is after using a pumice stone, like can you believe it? I know it looks really dry and crusty, but they looked a lot drier and crustier before. <laughs> this Cetaphil is another one of my favorite lotions. It, doesn't leave as much of a sticky tacky feeling afterward as like amlactin does or lubriderm um, working hands those all leave like kind of a film on top of the skin and i just hate that it also makes them more prone to like clinging to dust and dirt and being a little harder to clean however this one also has vitamin e and it also um, has some great oils, and I find it does soak in really well, and it kind of leaves a more satin finish, so my foot does feel kind of smoother and more luxurious afterward, but it's not my favoriteest. But you can see it really did a great job of like removing that ashy look from my foot, and it feels pretty good. It soaks in and it lasts a good long time, uh, a, little bit, a little bit longer than the St. Ives Hydrating. And here you can see a side by side. I mean, they look relatively the same. This one's a bit more satin finishy. It's a little more glossy looking, a little smoother. And the other one actually has already soaked up the St. Ives so much. The other side that I'm not looking at right now, this one has soaked up the St. Ives so much. I'm like ready for another layer. And so I'm actually going to add some Cetaphil on top of this to give it the same sort of glossy after feel the satin finish and it'll last even longer because it's been like double hydrated i'm kind of curious i'll keep an eye on my feet today and report back to you guys like which one lasted longer before it needed rehydrating i do get ridiculous questions sometimes like have you heard of moisturizer which is obviously kind of an insult or like have you tried any lotions and yes man i i use lotion all day long on my feet but it is a pain in the ass to have to reapply it over and over and over and over so i try to find ones that last a good duration of time, but you know, don't leave that horrible after feeling. I just can't stand it. By the way, this red ring around my skin I'm pointing out here, that is just what it looks like. That's how the this body has naturally figured out how to delineate between the pommel plantar skin and my leg skin. And it is always red, but it's not from irritation or inflammation. It's just what it looks like. So anyway, this is what my nightstand look like. looks like. I have that Foot Logics um, Urea mousse, which I love. And then I have the Cetaphil and lactin 15%. And my favorite, the St. Ives. Works well for me. Bye. 
So many of you have been asking me recently, how are my son's hands and feet doing? And this is how they were doing a couple of weeks ago. This is, I think, 10 days ago when we finally sat down and did his feet. He's been putting it off and putting it off. We've had a really busy, super fun, chaotic summer schedule with school not in session right now. And he has not wanted to do it. Also spending every day in flip-flops and outside a lot. His feet are filthy. But besides the dirty coloring of the skin, it is also really thick really hard. It's been flaking off and he's been picking at them. Also, those cracks are going pretty deep. They're not split and bleeding, but he's been walking very flat footed and complaining that they're starting to feel really uncomfortable. So I finally laid down the law and said, we're doing a soak and scrape. I tried the grater. It did not work out well. These are not a perfect after shot of his feet because this is today about 10 days later. And so there's some regrowth, but on the whole, they look way better. And next time we're going to do them way sooner. But he told me recently he's fine with me doing before and after shots, but he doesn't want the camera on the whole time that we're doing the shave and the scrape. So that's as much as we get. Let's help my feet out and do some crack maintenance. This crack in the middle is really hurting and it's time to take care of it. This uh, hangnail clipper with the curved tip is what I usually use, but I got a pair of these flat tipped ones to try them out. On the left there and on the right here, I was having bad cracks and they've really healed up all on their own, just basically by pumicing in the shower uh, and letting them grow out. But this one in the middle, especially the right there where I was pushing with my thumb, has been hurting and cracking worse every day. And so it's finally time to do something about it. I've been hoping that if I just kind of let it be for a while, it would heal itself up, but it wasn't. And here I am trying these straight clippers and um, basically immediately, no. I love my hook-nosed clippers, and so here I am coming back with the original hangnail clippers, which have served me so well. It was still hurting a little bit after taking off that initial thick layer, but not as much. And my theory here is that just because of the way the foot likes to curl here, when I curl my toes inward, that large flap of hard skin was actually pushing against my foot as I curled my toes down toward, you know, curled my foot in, and it was causing it to split worse. So at this point, it will be worth it to have an exposed crack in the middle of my foot because at least then I can point my toes and curl my foot down, which I haven't been able to do for like a week. Walking and curling my foot the opposite direction hasn't been such a problem. So this is one of those cases where the skin is actually making it worse instead of the skin kind of protecting the crack and letting it heal. So anyway, I had to come down. And after I clipped off the bulk of it, I realized how thick this skin was here already. I didn't think it was time to do my feet again, but I guess it is because it, they're pretty thick. Time has been flying this summer. So I realized I was gonna have to come in with the shaver and actually thin this skin out a lot more all around the crack so that it stays soft and flexible and will actually start healing coming in with some detail shaving right over the top of the crack to get this skin as low as possible. And that will keep it as flexible as possible. And immediately, just without even moving my foot yet, it feels so much better. So that's just how I gotta deal with it sometimes. Looking and feeling good, I'm just kind of trying to feel what's uneven. And uh, I can tell that there's still a little flap of skin here that was pushing against my foot when I curled my toes in and it would have to go. And also this skin below the crack was just a little too hard. It actually wasn't that thick, so I had to be really careful to take it off in thin little pieces. But um, yeah, feels so much better. Now I'm just evening it out. I can tell where it's like gonna feel uneven when I step. So I'm just trying to make it smooth all the way around. And this will heal really great. Thanks for watching. Let me show you. I have this new crack right here on my foot that was really bothering me on my heel just like you're talking about. And I totally understand walking on your tiptoes because it's so painful. And it seems like every time you put a little weight on your heel, it splits farther in. And that was what was happening to my heel here. So by now you probably know that my theory around crack maintenance is to keep the skin low and soft around it. So remove the skin around it in one way or another and then soften it with oils or lotions regularly until it heals. And in the past, that is all I have done, just like removed the skin, kept it moisturized and crossed my fingers and hoped for the best, which does not actually always work very well. Sometimes you still suffer with the crack for weeks. And so based on the encouragement I got here on TikTok from other people with this condition or just with cracked dry heels in general, I have started using super glue and I want to show you how I add that into this process and how well it works. If you're callous um, or 
tough, dry skin on your heel is not as thick as mine or would be painful to rub around like this, don't come in with the rasp dry. You know, you can soak your foot first and rasp it, or you can just use a pumice stone or foot file or like electric foot file, like whatever works for you to come in and take the skin down so that it's thinner and going to be more flexible and more forgiving on that crack. And then if you did that wet, let it dry out. Don't apply moisturizer yet. And while the skin is not oily and at its most best state for clinging to super glue, simply super glue it up. I did have to walk around on my toe for like three minutes while this dried, but here it is the next day. Super soft and supple because I thinned that skin out and have been keeping it moisturized, but also I can just squeeze that crack, flex my foot around, and it's not opening up at all, which will allow it an opportunity to heal while I live my daily life, and it feels great. Welcome to the hand shave where I cut the skin off my hands. But first, here's where we started. This is uh, getting quite thick and it was time to take it down. Lately, in the last few months, I've been using the cheese grater foot file, foot rasp, whatever you want to call it, on my fingers instead of using the shaver at all. And it's been a total game changer for me. This thing, even though these blades aren't as good as the ones I had before, and yes, I will be buying more of those original ones, um, it does a phenomenal job of taking all the skin down on all my fingers pretty rapidly and also very risk-free. You guys might remember a few months ago and all the times before that when I was using the razor on my fingers, I was often cutting too low or too deep or making mistakes and it was just not nearly as safe and comfortable. But the foot rasp, it just takes it all down really evenly and I don't even have to look. It's just like a very relaxed way to remove the skin. I can feel it and I just keep rubbing it back and forth until it's the right depth. And then I use that Foot Logics Callus Softener Spray, which you just saw me spray, on the bulk of the skin after I've rasped the fingers. Um, it really does a tremendous job of keeping the skin soft and making it more pliable so that this razor just slides through it like butter. I mean, it's just night and day. When I don't use the Callus Softener, my shave is very choppy and it's very labored and with the callus softener the shave is just smooth and easy i have a lot of control and it's wonderful foot logic sent me that callus softener spray and i will be using it forever more thank you foot logics because it makes such a huge difference between the callus softener and the rasp my hand shave is now cut down significantly i think it takes about 20 minutes per hand whereas previously it was like 45 minutes to an hour per hand so what a vast improvement anyhow i want to end this video reading some messages because we've been doing that here and there lately and i have received some wonderful ones the last time that i went to check my messages which was earlier this week i had 350 something unread messages so i was like starting to feel bogged down by that and I finally went through and read and replied to all of my messages and I've said it before but I'll say it again if you send me just the three little hand waves or just a hi I'm not going to reply there's just too much going on for me to bother with that so I'm grateful that you wrote in and said hey but there's nothing for me to reply to that too but if you wrote in with a question I hope you got your reply and I hope you've seen it by now and most likely you've replied back again because I've had some exchanges since then. But anyway, here's a few messages that I found that I really loved. First, we have Maddie in Australia who wrote, Hi, this is probably a bit weird, but I've had it in my mind for a while. So I've lived with OCD my whole life, and one of my biggest struggles is obsessive skin picking. Something you may not know about your videos is that watching you peel, is that weird to say? Your skin actually decreases the urge for people like me to pick at their own skin. Something about the sound or the visuals, I don't know, but it's weirdly very soothing. Soothing. So I guess I just wanted to say thank you for putting yourself out there and being willing to share your condition with us all. Not only are you helping to spread awareness, but you're also helping me with something I've struggled finding a solution for my entire life. Thank you, Miss Parmesan Palms, and have a blessed day from Australia. Isn't that beautiful? All right, next message. Thank you, Maddie in Australia. This one is from another woman in the UK. I don't have a skin picking disorder, OCD, nor do I have your genetic mutation, but I do have anxiety, insomnia, and depression. Your videos help me when I'm having a rough night with both and or insomnia. Your voice is so soothing that it calms my anxiety right down. I stop overthinking and I just sit and listen. The content of your videos help me, kind of like how satisfying the pimple popping videos do. It's a satisfaction that makes my head goblins happy, and I feel content enough to go to sleep. I can also sit and watch you for hours. Sometimes I start from the beginning of your videos and just binge watch. Thank you. <laughs> 
Now you now to learn that you upload the raw footage to YouTube just makes my heart burst with excitement. <laughs> Please never stop posting. I love your voice and your videos. Love from the UK, this anxious, depressed bean. <laughs> How wonderful was that? Anyway, the final message is from a follower in New York, and I think it leaves us with a beautiful message to remember. She says, you're incredible. Made me so sad when I watched the video of you taking care of your son's feet. I hate the cruelty of people. I'm glad you had your babies. Thank you. They just have a good mama. Just because we aren't perfect doesn't mean we shouldn't be here. I have hammer toes, crooked and curled. People comment all the time. All I can think is, yeah, unfortunately, my imperfections show. And I wonder what yours are. Beautiful sentiment. I agree. You know, everybody has flaws. Everybody has problems. You can't always see them. My life is is really great. And I'm not just saying that to like, I don't know, convince myself of it. My life truly is great. And I have so much that I want in this world. And unfortunately, it comes along with this weird skin that I got to remove. But you know, I got the tools for it. And now I got people watching and it's kind of more fun than it used to be. So thanks for hanging around. That was a good one. The saga of the crack on my left foot continues. You can see it's traveling up toward my toes and I've told you guys that it does. I gotta do like a time lapse of how much the cracks actually travel. It's because they split upward toward my toes, not downward straight into my foot. And what I gotta do is as the crack splits upward, the skin that's above it becomes like this dry flap that actually gets in the way of me flexing my foot and causes the crack to crack more. So I got to clip it off with my trusty hangnail clippers. That is the spot that's really hurting the most. And it's mostly from curling like my pinky toe inward toward my big toe, which I'll give an example of in a little bit. But first I had a couple splits on the left that were just forming. They don't hurt at all, but in order to avoid them cracking, I don't know, worse and also to prevent them from catching on the greater when I do more of the skin removal on the ball of my foot here, I tried, I trimmed those down so that they wouldn't be a problem. And especially having a crack snag on the grater is awful because then it starts to rip it and it makes it worse. So I wanted to avoid that by trimming these down as low as possible before doing anything else. And after finishing up the side of this major crack here, I'm going to do a couple flex tests. The skin on the ball of my foot is just too hard and it's not flexing. This is the motion that causes that painful crack to crack more. So it's time to take the skin down, starting with my toe, because this skin is really thick and really bothering me. I know they look dirty. I mean, they are dirty, but in a way that I can't clean off. They're stained with dust and dirt, like fine dirt in the air and along the ground that gets trapped in between all the fine, tiny cracks of my skin because the, my skin has moisturize on, my, uh, moisturizer on it. So because I'm applying lotion and creams, uh, oils all day long, depending on what my foot needs, there's always that oiliness to my skin. And so then everything really clings to it and works its way into the cracks. And then it's kind of permanently there until I can remove the skin. I can scrub the shit out of it in the shower with like a nail brush or a pumice stone and it'll help marginally. But ultimately it just gets increasingly discolored until I remove it. And here I am going crazy along the edges. You know, I used to cut my toes and the edges of my foot the worst when I used the shaver. Uh, the shaver is not a problem at all in the middle of my foot, but along the edges, it's uh, really dangerous. And the rasp just does it without any problems whatsoever. I loved that I could use the corner of the rasp right there, just on the corner to get the skin off right there where it was really thick. It's looking pretty good. After this, in my next video, I'm going to do toe maintenance and also shave the ball of my foot. But this was a good start. Feels so much better. You, dear commenter, are the MVP. Some people demand it of me. Other people love it and whine that it's not coming. When is it coming? When are you doing toe maintenance? Guys, I only have so much growth that I can cut off. And so you got to wait. And those of you who are patiently waiting, I adore you. Thank you. Also, recently, a bunch of you guys have been answering my comments for me, and I freaking love it. Thank you. I love all of you. Gold stars. I wish you could, like, pick top commenters or pin comments like you used to be able to do or something because I get thousands of comments a day. I mean, I know each of my daily videos gets maybe a few hundred, but across all the videos that are currently being viewed, some of which are probably going viral and have like 5 million views, the comments is just out of control and there's no way that I can stay on top of all of them. So like what I try to do is I try to answer the topmost comments as they're rolling in, ones that I really feel like are 
commonly asked questions that deserve a response and hopefully I'll reply soon enough that like all future commenters will see it and a lot of people will get the answer they're looking for. But man, there's a handful of you guys right now who are actively replying to all the comments on all my new videos and making sure people are getting the answers they're looking for. And I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's nothing else I can freaking do. Maybe someday I'll send you all prizes. But uh, in the meantime, just know that you have my gratitude because there's no way I can stay on top of all of this stuff. Also, talking about being uh, banned and all the haters, I am having to deal with them at all times. Um, but thankfully, I've kind of got a system down now. Like if you have a horrible thing to say, but it's not necessarily something that I believe will make you want to flag me, I just let it be. I don't even read it. I start to read it. Oh, this is a mean comment. Keep rolling. Um, because I will get you know, hundreds of the exact same comment across different videos every single day, such as like, why don't you just clean your feet? Dude, how do your feet get like this? Oh my God, I'm vomiting. You know, ew, gross, whatever. Like I get, I get so much of that. It's almost like white noise, you know, but I do kind of strategically block people. And I really want to thank the haters for calling themselves out because it really helps me clean up my feet and make sure that I don't get flagged and reported all the time. So things that will automatically get you banned is like saying, you need a trigger warning. Sure. Like if you, if you are so sensitive or so disturbed by feet that you need a trigger warning to make sure that you never see it, easy. I'm just going to block you. Then you will never see it. You're welcome. Other comments in that vein would be like, please get an intro or goddamn, what happened to hello? Get yourself an intro before you get banned. Like, okay, obviously same vein as the uh, trigger warning people. Like if you need an intro so that you know to avoid my videos, the easiest way to get what you want would be to hit that block button and make sure you never see my videos. Another similar thing you could do or one could do is to click the not interested button, press and hold the video and tell TikTok, I don't want to see this. But you know what will get it on your For You page? <laughs> Let's all say it together. Commenting! Engaging with the video is the last thing you want to do if you don't want to see something, FYI. But I'm sure that all of you who are watching here already know all this. So I don't know why I'm talking about it. I'm glad you're listening, though. These toes were really grown out. And actually, I did go a little bit too deep on the middle toe there. Did you? Could you tell? Could you notice it? There was like one spot on the upper left hand corner of that toe where it went a little too deep and there was like a speck of blood for a second. So for anyone asking, which I get this question just as commonly as the others, uh, do you ever cut yourself so deep that it bleeds? Yes. Can I tell that I cut too deep? Usually no. Uh, I've got a pretty good handle on how deep to go so that I'm not hurting myself. I know my toes look pretty pink purplish and some people say that looks really painful, but they feel great. To me, this skin just looks different. When it's as thin as yours, it's not nearly as opaque. So it's a little bit transparent. You can see the blood flow under there, but these toes feel wonderful. And that spot that I cut a little bit too low feels fine. Thank goodness. If I cut a lot deeper than that, it sure it would hurt for a couple days, but these feel great. See you next time for shaving. Well, congratulations, my dude. You weren't born with a genetic mutation, but I was. My keratin 9 gene is mutated, one teeny tiny gene, and my palms and my soles, all that pommel planter skin, is covered in hyperkeratinized skin. There's nothing I can do, and there's nothing beneath it but more hyperkeratinized skin until we exit the epidermal layer of skin and get down to the dermis. And anybody who knows anything about skin knows you don't want to take off that. So all I can do is thin it out. And that's what I'm doing here. Why didn't I do my whole foot, you may ask. I just didn't have the time. I had to do the rasping, the crack maintenance, the toe clipping, and the shaving on both my left and my right foot. And I only had like about an hour, so that's what I did this day. And very shortly, um, I'll be doing the rasping and shaving on the rest of my foot, but I just couldn't do it all at once. And so it's kind of a need uh, on a needs basis. So what really needed to happen today, or when I did this shave, was that I needed to make the skin on the ball of my foot more supple and flexible because it was really hindering the healing of this big crack here, which you guys saw me do crack maintenance on the other day. And then I did toe maintenance because that really needed to be done. And the final step was just to use the razor here to thin everything out on the top. And I could have gone further. If I had two hours to play with, then I would have done it. But instead... My heels and the middle of my foot just weren't bothering me as much. And as to the question, how the hell do you let it get this way? 
it's, uh, you know, I have a life. <laughs> Believe it or not, my whole life is not taking care of my skin. It could be. If I wanted to be absolutely obsessed and fastidious about my self-care, about my skin care, specifically for this condition, I could. But I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm a mother. I'm a self-employed entrepreneur with two small businesses at home that I run. I also am a homesteader. And I'm a friend. I sing in choir. I have stuff I want to do besides this. <laughs> you get it. So uh, I just do as much as I have to, to maintain my sanity, to maintain my comfort. And then uh, on the opposite end of maintaining my sanity or doing something for myself, this is for you guys. And I know it makes me seem crazy, but uh, Skin Jar, you're welcome.